Hey there, welcome back. In this video, I want to talk about the red pill movement. My video yesterday kind of touched on it and there were some people touching upon this sort of popular new subculture that's emerged over the last couple of years, the red pill community. And I just wanted to give my opinion on it and you know, what I think. Am I red pilled? Uh, what do I think it means? What is my definition, etc. And see if I can get some feedback from you guys watching as well. So what is the red pill for me? Um, well, obviously it's taken from the Matrix movie. And, you know, so then at the most basic level, it must mean the, the truth. The red pill is the truth. The blue pill is the curtain that's been pulled over your eyes to blind you from the truth, as Morpheus said, although I'm paraphrasing. Another way to put it would be, it is the truth behind the conditioning that we've been um, conditioned to believe, perhaps. So this exists really everywhere. Those of you who are watching my channel because you're learning languages or learning Japanese, uh, you obviously know there's a red pill truth even there about how language is taught, in a blue pill kind of way you could say, and how people are actually learning languages. When you look at polyglots out there who are able to speak 15 languages, some of them, um, obviously uh, they know the truth. They're the experts. It's not the language teachers who might not even be able to speak one second language. So there are other red pills out there as well. There are red pills with money. I remember being told that you should store and save all your cash in a nice safe bank account and don't use credit cards because they're bad and you don't want to get stuck in debt. Actually, I mean, these are not hidden truths. These are probably just basic truths. Um, but I think the point is that red pill truths exist everywhere from money, from banking, to language learning, to dating and everywhere in between. So in the red pill, red pill community though, it's usually about dating. It's usually about men and women, intrapersonal, interpersonal dynamics. I think the first red pill most guys learn is that they should just be really nice and be very supplicating and women are all princesses and you should buy them flowers and chocolate and you know, do everything that they want. And uh, that's probably the first one that you kind of discover, usually the hard way, or at least, you know, when I was a younger guy, I discovered it the hard way when I had my first girlfriend and my first experiences and I totally cocked them up because, you know, I was an idiot. And I guess you could say I was completely blue pilled. So the red pill, red pill, as far as the community goes though, is something that I don't really subscribe to. Um, I don't subscribe to channels, red pill channels, because I just don't find them necessary. I think a lot of them are bordering on mental masturbation. And I think they cater not solely to education like they will claim, but solely to creating videos uh, that give viewers the dopamine kick that they want. And the dopamine kick that a lot of them want, which I touched on yesterday, is that a lot of these guys in the West are having trouble in their dating life and they're frustrated and they're a bit angry or very angry and what better dopamine kick than to have a bunch of pretty girls sat around a table and other guys kind of make them look dumb and then for them to watch it and be like yeah see you're not that special kind of thing which is what a lot of these uh, red pill channels are these days for me i think if you want to know about evolutionary psychology as it relates to interpersonal intrasexual dynamics. You can read The Evolution of Desire by Dr. David Buss. That's probably all you need to get some understanding. And I think The Red Queen is another one, which is a more simplified version. It's also another very interesting book. Uh, and you can understand the different mating strategies of men and women and see how they conflict and see why they exist and get a deeper understanding uh, about both sexes. Um, I've read both of those books and everything else, all the channels and podcasts about this kind of thing, you know, pale in comparison to what is written by the experts in those books. In fact, I believe a lot of those red pill guys do often cite those books as well and are um, parroting what's written uh, by those evolutionary biologists. So these kinds of channels, um, I really refer to as the monosphere because they do, they are really just guys often sitting behind a microphone moaning about the hypergamous nature of women and how women are bad and, you know, basically lecturing men on what they should do 
and in my opinion, playing defense a little bit too hard. For example, I know they offer some good advice, but I do think they have jumped the shark a little bit and do get a little bit anally retentive, do get a little bit repetitive. And while they complain about the current situation and how things are, I do find that they have thrown their arms up in the air a little bit and they're not really solutions focused. They're more like, oh, look at this clip of this girl who's just broke up with her husband while he was, you know, serving in the military. Look, oh, she's so bad. And it's like, okay, you could watch those videos all day, which is why I call it mental masturbation. Um, but you know, what's the solution? What are you going to do about it? What should you do about it? Um, you know, that's, that would be more educational. But you got to understand that if you are prone to watching these podcasts and watching these videos, you've got to look at it as somewhat mental masturbation. These guys are making a living from putting out the kinds of videos that they're putting out. Polarizing videos, videos sitting around a table. This is a formula that's been proven to work. And for any YouTuber you see, or any podcaster, if they're following a formula that works and gets views and gets donations and money, they're gonna continue to follow that formula over actually providing you with education and actually caring about you. Perhaps that in itself has uncovered somewhat of a red pill on the red pill community. Your average person doesn't really care about the average other person. What they do care about more is, you know, making money and uh, making as much money as possible from their channel and doing what works uh, technically uh, with the content as well. So do realize that. Do realize that the only person who's really ever gonna be there for you and the only person uh, that can help you is really yourself and it's important not to get caught up in the negativity that a lot of these channels present, even if you know a lot of their information is based on evolutionary biology, which is interesting. Um, a lot of it is also complaining and following a formula that gets views, that gets people riled up, that gets dopamine pumping in the brains of frustrated men. I think one thing that they also fail to realize is that in a lot of ways, they talk about the male versus female mating strategy and a lot of them are always throwing this word around hypergamy, which is basically a woman's mating strategy, you know? And hypergamy basically means climbing the ladder. Um, a woman will, will always date or marry or mate up, never really down. And whether that's up in looks or up in, up in status, money, etc. Um, which is nature. It's not really worth complaining about at all. You could get women who make a female podcast and they complain about a male's mating strategy, which is polygamy, basically. And I'm speaking about this on a very um, basic monkey level, uh, in a monkey level context here. We are human beings. We do have a higher level of thinking, but on a basic monkey, tribal, homo sapien level, yeah, the mating strategies are at odds. If your only purpose in life is to replicate and survive, then sure, it's in a man's best interest to spread his genes as much as possible. And it's in a woman's best interest to hold a guy down for protection and uh, resources. So they are technically at odds if you break humans down to our fundamental core monkey brain desires. I'd be interested to hear some replies on how you think the red pill community or red pill channels or podcasts like Fresh and Fit or Andrew Tate or uh, the whatever podcast, how these actually help you. Have they helped you? And in what ways have they actually helped you? And in what ways is it just entertainment that makes you feel good about yourself? Um, maybe because you can't get a date and you, uh, or you can't get someone to like you. So you, you get something from watching, you know, women getting besmirched online, sitting around a table. For me, I actually think they're a bit too meta. I don't often see guys in that community even hanging around with women, although they say they do. I can't think of any of them who can, uh, who have got women actually liking them to the point of, to the point uh, of the advice that they give. So the advice that they tend to give now is get your, get your life together, make a bunch of money, hit the gym, do all that kind of stuff. And I disagree that that is going to get you the kind of women that you want, to be honest. If you hit the gym and then you make a bunch of money, but you're still boring and you don't know how to be charismatic when you meet someone, 
um, that's not really gonna work for you. I think their advice is a little bit too meta, a little bit incomplete. And I think the personalities that a lot of them have, which is this very sort of uptight, carrot up your kind of mentality, uh, where they're just overly critical and overly screening and actually overly defensive, which I just mentioned before. I think living overly defensive is actually a bit lame. And honestly, most of them don't trigger my authority bias at all. Um, a lot of them you've seen get owned by other people. A lot of them you've seen, I mean, just a few weeks ago, those guys on Fresh and Fit were going wild, going mental, emotional outburst, uh, live. Um, which was hilarious by the way and then you know you're expected to look at them as some kind of like you know pinnacle of masculinity and it's like well already I don't but also yeah they've never triggered that authority bias in me they have a podcast and they have you know they're following that formula as I mentioned before in the video but as far as do they have are they the kind of person that I want to be no and that's how I get my advice. That's how I get my input. My Instagram is structured that way. My YouTube subscriptions are structured that way. The people I ask for advice, I only ask people for advice or listen to people if I'm like studying Japanese. Is that guy good after 18 months? Good, that's what I want. So I'll listen to everything he says. With the gym, does this guy look how I wanna look? Yes. Money, does this guy have a bunch of money? Did he make it in the way that I'm making it? Okay, I'll listen to him. And that's, for me, it's really simple. Looking at Red Pill Podcasts, you know, I don't really look at anyone that I, I wanna be like. The advice is watered down advice from those books I mentioned earlier, when they are talking about the biological side. Uh, and the rest of it, you know, some of it is not even relevant to me. I think a lot of the time they're, you know, they're in Miami and, and in Miami there's a certain kind of woman. And I think they're skewed from living in that city. But anyway, I'm interested to know your thoughts on the red pill, the red pill movement. Obviously I touched on it yesterday with Passport Bros. I think Passport Bros has kind of stemmed off that movement or just has some relation to it. Maybe it's like a spin-off aspect to it. Um, what do you think? Do you consider yourself red pill? Do you have, or are you aware of any other red pills? You know, we touched on the dating red pills, but also obviously there's language learning red pills. There's red pills about money, the government, entertainment, news, if you can call it that, all sorts. Let me know when you heard of this red pill, blue pill concept, uh, in what co context was it in? For me, it was language learning. And um, do you consider yourself a red pillar? Do you consider yourself part of the red pill community? Do you believe it helps you? And do, do you believe that it can also just be mental masturbation that people choose to engage in rather than actually going out and experience the, experiencing the world? Um, for themselves and getting knowledge that way. Let me know what you think and uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Take care.